every single low speed, high speed, regardless of your application, constant volume. I'm spending six months of valve putting it on that air station to flow, test that one flow. And I'm doing it at one inch, two and a half inches, and then back at one inch to make sure that that settles back in, okay? From this point in the process, basically everything is complete. We're right now what we're gonna do is start to package it up. I'll add a few more terminal blocks to it. You'll get all the labeling with regards to UL certification, seismic um, certifications, your ship two labels. And again, like I told you, everything that's made, being placed into a box is maintaining it. You get all the information outside of that box that you can deliver that box to the actual room and tag of where that valve is gonna be installed. Or you can take it out of the box and you'll know exactly what's going on. The less it's being handled, the better off you are. Okay, any questions? Let's take a walk through the rest of the process. So at this point in the process, basically what's happening is it's wrapped up, all the wires have been terminated. What we've done is actually put the calibration label on the device. It has the serial number. Typically what's gonna happen is once they take this cover off, it sits up on top of the drop ceiling and you'll never see it again, right? It's good to know that it has the serial number. But again, everything is plugged in, wired up and so on and so forth, the ter terminal blocks and so on and so forth. The operator actually stamps it complete it's getting the necessary labels with regards to, like I said, UL approvals, CSA, uh, and in addition to size. That in, all, in addition to that, it also has the, the shipping label that's gonna be applied to it. Like I said, it's very redundant is what's going on here. All the information that allows you to be successful, okay? You can't really screw that up. We don't like to see that. Constant volume valves, what we do is we'll actually break it down. What you see here is we actually broke the pivot arm down, zip tying it here because what's gonna happen is the shaft is gonna be extruding out of that valve if we don't break it down, and the packaging is not designed to with that. The other thing is the reason why we zip tie this here, we certainly don't want anybody putting the earth on this device, because what's gonna happen is it's gonna destroy the valve if you don't have it set correctly, okay? Directional flow labels are on every single one of the valves. You'll notice the white and red arrow. That's your opportunity to walk through your commissioning, walking through and making sure everything's in a horizontal state. If you find something that's in a horizontal and it has a yellow or a blue tag on it, you're gonna have a problem. Get us the information, we'll reorientate it, we'll get you back out there. Right this way, guys. All right, so 150, 170 valves a day. It could be one valve per order, or it could be one day of just building one customer's product, okay? What I'm showing you here is this is the, the upgrade. This is the orientation, right? This, this is, I'm sorry, not orientation. This is the retrofit kit, okay? This is the upgrade kit that you're gonna get. And what we've done here is it actually simulates just like the valve. It has the room and tag. It has all the information to know exactly what valve that's gonna be a, supply to okay now I don't necessarily know when that valve shipped we do have some information that's shared with us through the, the product support to say listen it was pre-92 or post-98 there's certain things that have changed if you've seen the Phoenix product it's changed slightly over time and so on and so forth but it's making sure that you have every component necessarily to be successful from what I understand it takes roughly about an hour for every one of these kits to be installed because of the work that's being done on it, okay? So it's not easy, but it is a great way of making sure that you're sustaining and maintaining that plus or minus 5% and complementing the valve product with the necessary equipment that allows it to complement itself, okay? Depending on where it's going, you actually decide whether you want to chip it, whether it's gonna be palletized or it's loose cube. We get more loose cube in a truck, but again, how you're actually working that order. If you wanna say, listen, I get a multi-floor application i want the penthouse first and then i want the eighth floor then i want the seventh floor listen we'll do whatever you want i'll palletize it by floor i'll tag it i'll label it to make your job easier okay but i'm going to drop 150 valves on you and you just need to make sure you hit the space for it okay that's some of the challenges again i'm not carrying a lot of finished goods inventory i don't carry any finished goods inventory so what i'm building today is i'm expecting to ship in the next two days here okay and i don't have a lot of space 
This is my shipping area. This is where the queue space is. We'll walk into the actual warehouse and see what's going on there. Uh, but again, I want to be turning these orders as quickly as possible. We're shipping through UPS, FedEx, FedEx Freight, uh, LTL, uh, customer pickup. It's always an opportunity. Some of the local guys, they'll get a box truck, pull up to the dock, we'll load that thing up and off it goes.